Next game of the night, the Sacramento Kings and the Indiana Pacers. And the Kings here with a good victory in this one, 127-122. The Kings improved to 5-6 and six on the year, and the Pacers fall to 6-4. and four. And a good ma matchup it was, so Miles Turner in this one, 30 minutes of play. 6.6 6 rebounds, 4 assists, and he added a 3. So Miles Turner, he's getting tons of block shots so far early in the season, but he's still a center I would sell high on because his numbers aren't up to par in far as scoring and rebounding the basketball. The block shots are great and all, but with all these good players on the roster, I don't think Turner, he's going to be a good scorer or a great fantasy player. Right now, I know he's ranked in the top 10 in nine cat leagues because of his blocking ability but Turner if I could find a good trade out there and get rid of him I would Victor Oladipo he had a decent game in this one 21 points three rebounds four assists for Depot eight of 20 from the field 211 from the three-point line so Victor Oladipo he might not play tonight because of a back-to-back -back. but in this one he had a heavy workload with 37 minutes played in Indiana they had a short bench in this one, Dante Zabonis, another big game for him, and he's been a stud this season. 28 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists, 12 of 21 from the field. So Zabonis, he's doing more than most fantasy owners probably expected with huge lines and double-doubles like this one. And I see it continuing just about for the rest of the season. Malcolm Brogdon, he's been a beast as well this year in fantasy basketball. 24 points, 4 rebounds, 9 assists for Brogdon. But Brogdon, he's definitely a player I would look to sell high this week at the guard position. Because I think you could get a decent package, even a 2-for-1 for, for Brogdon of two players who are maybe struggling or who are on the brink. But right now, Malcolm Brogdon, I don't think he's going to keep up with scoring 24 points a game. This season, so I would try to trade him. Doug McDermott, once in a while, he has a flash game like he did in this one, and he got hot from three point range three of five from deep, eight of ten from the field for McDermott. 29 minutes, 21 points, but he still don't have fantasy value. We got to see more out of him for him to have value. Justin Holiday in this one, he got the start 34 minutes, eight points. Five rebounds, three of eight from the field, two of four from three. So Holiday, he was a recommended pickup this week at the forward position. And Holiday, he's going to play a good role for this team with TJ Warren out. I know Jeremy Lamb's starting to practice, but I don't expect him to be back or playing a major role after the ACL injury for a while. So Justin Holiday, he's a player that you should pick up on your wire. I know it was a mediocre game, but he's going to have better days ahead. Now to the King side of things. Raquan Holmes, another good double-double in this one. 16 points, 10 rebounds, 3 assists, 6 for 11 from the field, 1 for 1 from downtown was at home. So Holmes, he's been pretty good this season. And he's another play I recommend to sell high this week is Holmes. Those videos will come out later today, but Holmes, he's playing over his head, I think. Marvin Bagley, he had a bad game in this one. So when these guys, one has a good game and the one doesn't. So it seems like they're switching each and every week who's having a good game or not each game, I mean. But Raquan Holmes, it's a good line. He's playing well. You got him in the ninth to 10th round of fantasy drafts. So he's a player that you're happy to have right now. But I would sell him high. Devon Fox, a good game in this one. 21 points, 5 rebounds. 9 assists, 7 of 19 from the field for Fox, and 2 for 6 from downtown. So Fox, he's been a good player the last few seasons. He got the big contract in the offseason. Just the only thing with him is field goal percentage and points are down a little bit this season. But Fox will be fine. Harrison Barnes, another play I would sell high this week. 37 minutes of play, 30 points. 8 rebounds, 2 assists, 10 of 14 from the field, and 2 of 3 from downtown. So Barnes this season, he's scoring the basketball better. His 3-point shooting's improving, and he's even getting to the line a decent amount of times. And Barnes, he was a player that was, wasn't was drafted in a majority of fantasy leagues. And now, with these big numbers and stuff, I think I could package Barnes and someone else for a big superstar in fantasy basketball because I don't think Barnes he's going to sustain scoring 20 points per night like he has so far this season I know it's a good 11 game sample but once the 20 game mark hits then you know who's probably going to be for real or not and I don't think Barnes 
is going to keep this up. Marvin Bagley, he's a player this year I said to avoid. And he's going to have ups and downs. And in this game, 8.7 rebounds to assist. 4 or 7 from the field. He only played 23 minutes. So Marvin Bagley, his father don't like him over there in Sacramento. He said his son should get traded. And Bagley, he's just been inconsistent since he got drafted. And another inconsistent game in this one. Buddy Heald maybe starting to shoot out of his slump that he's been in all season. 6 for 11 from downtown. 18 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists. A buddy healed. He's just turning into a pure 3-point shooter right now. He's healed with the 11 attempts, all of them at the 3-point line. So buddy healed. Last season, he was one of the best shooters in the NBA. And this year, I think he's going to bounce back. Even if he gets traded, wherever he goes, healed. he's a flamethrower shooter. And he's going to have fantasy value. Tyler Halliburton, he got good minutes off the bench as a six-man here. 12 points, three rebounds, four assists, three or six from downtown. So Halliburton, he's a player that should be owned in 12-team leagues and more. But shallower leagues, 8-12-10-team to 12 team, 10 team leagues, he's just not ready yet to get a role on your roster. Because he's going to be inconsistent. His minutes are going to be up and down. But I think he'll lock in at about 20, 25 minutes a game. Glenn Robinson in this one, 20 minutes, 7 points, 3 boards, 2 assists, but he holds no value. Corey Joseph, 14 points, 14 minutes, 7 points, 2 rebounds, 4 assists. He has no value. And Hassan Whiteside, he actually played in this game, 9 minutes, 8 points, 2 boards. So Whiteside, they'll probably trade him by the deadline if they're out of it. And obviously, they got to play him to build his value up a little. Whiteside in the offseason, he signed a one-year deal to the veteran minimum. So they're going to try to build him up and trade him. And right now, Whiteside, he's not playing enough. And a lot of DMPs as well. So he shouldn't be owned on any fantasy rosters. So that was the Indiana Pacers and the Sacramento King recap.